All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Andy Norton, I'm the Director of Research at ODI. I'm delighted to welcome you to this event with our speaker, Mike Wilcock, who's a former colleague of mine at the World Bank. Really delighted to have you here, Mike. Um, on the science of delivery and the art and politics of institutional change with a particular spin to look at fragility and issues of, um, if you like, institutional change development under fragile conditions. Um, before I get on to that, a couple of quick ground clearings. One is um, if you could turn off the ringers on your mobile phones if they're still on. And the other is that if a fire alarm goes off, it's a real one. So <laughs> those are just, yeah, we don't do them for comic effect, it's basic. So that's, um, so let's uh, move on and I'll start by introducing the panel and the subject. Um, our director, Kevin Watkins, um, did a blog on the science of delivery a while back in which he commented that from five people he got eight different <laughs> notions of what it was. Um, I was digging into that with Mike a bit before we came, and it appears that this is partly a result of uh, Jim Kim, the president of the World Bank, effectively asking his staff to give meaning to that phrase and to think through what it means in different contexts. And as I understand that process, of discussion is still um, ongoing within the World Bank. So um, I'm sure Michael will have a lot of <laughs> interesting commentary on that. Um, so, but the key issues here are around, if you like, in the title, are around the balance between, if you like, potentially you know, more technocratic or if you like medical models around delivery and questions of the politics of delivery and the politics of institutional change and how in a productive way you would balance those two views or those two concerns. Um, let me introduce Mike quickly. Um, he um, has a position at the Kennedy School as a lecturer in public policy, but is also a lead social development specialist with the World Bank's development research group um, in, in DC. Um, he's very widely known for his work on the Justice for the Poor program, which he was a first mover in and instigator in, which is now, um, I think it's fair to say, one of the biggest international initiatives around accessible justice um, in the development community. Um, he's also works extensively on other topics with the Development Research Group. Two of his recent books, one is looking at um, participatory development projects and local conflict dynamics in Indonesia. Um, and another, just to give you an example of the breadth of work that he does, um, is titled History, Historians and Development Policy, A Necessary Dialogue um, with colleagues, both of those with colleagues. Um, so, yep, he's covered a very wide range of topics in the time I've known him, and I'm very much <laughs> looking forward to hearing him fit that breadth of perspective into the presentation today. Um, I'll introduce quickly as well our two discussants. Um, we have Philip Krauser, who's the head of research for the Budget Strengthening Initiative um, here at ODI in, the, in CAPE, in the Centre for Aid and Public Expenditure, um, and has worked extensively for the World Bank and German Technical Cooperation, particularly on issues, if you like, of public sector management, both in middle-income countries and fragile states. And also delighted to have Pilar Domingo, um, who's a research fellow in the politics and governance team with a particular interest around issues of accountability, rule of law, justice sector reform, rights and citizenship, and gender and politics, gender and political change. Um, so many thanks, Mike. I'll hand over to you. <coughs>